Today I'm going to talk about nutrition and how it affects grazing and why total grazing is best when we are than any other type of grazing. Today I'm going to talk about cool season grasses or C3 forages. Nutritionists, when they balance rations, they commonly use net maintenance energy or net gain energy or net man, uh, lactation energy along with protein and others. But they usually consider that the younger the forage is, the higher the energy is, which is true, and the higher the protein is, and the lower the fiber. And they consider that the lower the fiber is, the best or higher in daily intake there will be by th in the part of the animal. They usually um, calculate a ration for a total mixed ration where it's fed on a corral and they can mix this very young forage with other sources of effective fiber to avoid diarrhea or an excess of uh, potassium in relation to sodium so they don't have scours. But Will that help us to decide what's the best stage of maturity and how to graze for our cattle? If we take those um, advice, if we take advice from them, we may end up with a wreck because our cattle will select the highest energy parts of the plant if we allow them to graze selectively, and that will also be the part that has a very high protein content and very low fiber content. As a nutritionist needs to um, calculate enough protein in the ration to avoid diarrhea or scours, we need to balance the stage of maturity in our cool season forages so that we do not get scours from not enough um, fiber in the diet. Effective fiber is what it's called. And they also cut it with the machine and then mix it and feed it in a corral. We do not. We put our cows in the field because economic reality. We need to do, do it that way. So how do we balance or how do we gauge how mature our cool season grasses should be before we graze them so we do not have scours? Well, that's the stage of maturity. As the plant matures, the fiber goes up. But you may say, yeah, but the energy also goes down and the protein goes down. Yes, that's true. Energy and protein will go down and fiber will go up, but that will create a better balanced ration for your grazing animal. If we consider that the available energy is dependent on how much protein excess we have, we can easily find out that it's better to allow our forages to mature more Talking about cool season, C3 forages like alfalfa, clover, rye grass, orchard grass, all of those, even brassicas. Uh, they are low in fiber, normally high in protein and medium to high energy. So we do not need them to be so high as a lactating cow, a dairy cow. We want to create more forage per acre while we ensure that our cattle are healthy. So to achieve that, it pays to wait until it's more mature and then graze it in a non-selective way or a total graze that I call because it involves more than just one grazing. It involves the total grazing planning of the year. That's what I call a total grazing. And it's where the cows or your cattle will harvest 80 to 90% of available forage. Why is this so important? If we allow your cattle to graze selectively, they will, as I just said, choose or select the highest energy or sweetness parts of the plants and plants. So what will happen? They will get a higher energy ration yes but also very high in protein because the top part of the plant has more protein and less fiber so if we divide the plant in thirds and we will find out and analyze the 
energy, protein, and fiber of fish portion, the top part, the top third, will have the highest energy, sweetest, but also the highest protein, and also very low fiber. The lowest part will have much more fiber and less protein and less energy. So when we do a total grazing and they have to consume the whole plant, this will ensure a better balanced ration for your animals. And before we have good conversion efficiency of what you produce, your grasses and forages, to meat or beef, we require a healthy animal. That's number one. So what happens when we graze the top third or an immature cool season grass or forage in a total way? If we graze it when it's not mature enough or we let them graze the top third, even when it's mature, your cattle will have a protein excess in relation to available energy. That protein excess will ensure that the energy is not absorbed or assimilated by the animal because in the rumen, ammonia will be released when there is too much protein and that ammonia, being a gas, gets into the blood. When it gets into the blood, it raises the pH we can read that in the urine, in the milk urea nitrogen and blood urea nitrogen. So when that happens, it raises the pH above 8. A normal pH of the urine should be 7. I have seen a lot of pHs of 9, and that's what diseases like pink eye, foot rot, uh, pneumonia, and uh, strawberry wart need. They require a pH above 8.59. So do not give them what they need to reproduce and grow. Take, it, take the pH away by having your cows healthier and more efficient at converting what you are producing. That's number one. Number two, why is it so important that we uh, uh, let it mature more? Well. When we allow it to mature more, the digestible portion of the fiber will be more soluble than when it's greener, so to speak, or younger. So that means that even though it's lower in energy, more of it is available to the animal because the protein is also lower and less ammonia is produced. So we have two things here, less ammonia produced, more uh, intake into the body of the animal through the the digestive system through the blood and the soluble fiber is increased even though it's higher fiber there is the energy is better utilized this will be explained in detail in the total grazing maximizer or plus course online that will be offered later those of you that had already taken the course know that this is true because you have observed it do we want our cattle to have suboptimal health or do we want them to have thriving and vibrant health? We need them to be healthy, to have high fertility, good reproduction, daily gains, very good body condition, and we do not want them to be, have problems with diseases. So the first step is to have our cattle healthy. Next week, I will talk about warm season, perennial grasses like C4, like Bermuda, uh, Bahia grass, uh, Sudan grass, Johnson grass, and we will also explain how to graze them for maximum productivity and better health for your animals throughout the year. Thank you.